Some incredible new signals coming out over the weekend and as we start the new week for what's happening across the Arctic and there's some echoes back to the 1980s. Credit here to Joe Bastardi for pointing this out uh, over at Weather Bell. Interesting to see this stratospheric warming that we've been watching over the last couple of days and what he is pointing out is the fact that this mirrors something that we saw back in 1983 and 1989, very similar setup when you get this really strong stratospheric warming. It upsets what's happening in the Arctic, and that was a cold December. I actually dug back and looked. I think it was Sioux City. Uh, the average temperature in December was something like 6 degrees. I don't know. There were just records all across the country in 1983, and you're starting to see that. Also, the MJO lined up that year, too, where we were moving from 6 into 7, and Again, with the stratospheric warming and the MJO entering this phase, guys, I think it's going to be an early start to winter. And let me tell you why, uh, you know, I think this is going to be of interest. Because when you see a cold winter that starts in December, it just feels like winter goes on and on and on and on, right? I mean, because it's going to be climatologically cold in January, too. Even if we start to see an upswing, which we may it's going to stay uh, relatively cold, though, again, because it's January. What I think is interesting is at the end of this, look what happens. Another warming period replaces the second one once we get toward the end of the month. And to me, this just looks absolutely cold for the lower 48. Let's look at the artificial intelligence. I think this is an interesting look, too. It's going to be really warm, by the way, this week across the south. Some severe weather possible in the next couple of days. We'll talk about that. And cold enough that we could see flakes of snow Tonight into uh, maybe tomorrow for parts of Minnesota here over to, I don't know, maybe even parts of PA. Not a big chance, but look how warm it is over the next couple of days. Colder across the far southwest as this system moves in here. Okay, so don't get all tore up if you're waiting for cold. It's not happening this week. All right, it's going to be cold around the Great Lakes, but look what the AI is starting to pick up on once we get toward the following week. Now we're heading into the week of Thanksgiving, Tuesday and Wednesday. We've got one push of cold air that starts to move south. This looks pretty good to me, right? So you've got some chilly air that's trying to push all the way down into Texas, all the way down to the Gulf Coast by the time we get now to Black Friday. You've got to get the cold before you get the snow. I'm not even going to try to tell you where a snowstorm is going to be at this point, when you're going to get the snow, how much it's going to fall. I can tell you, you got to get cold first. All the signals are showing this. And boy, the AI is just going off the charts here with 10 to 15 degrees below average. And look, it's reloading another round of cold as we head into December. I don't know about that first round of cold, how chilly it's going to be, but this is the one that I'm watching once we get towards the first of the month into December. And typically when you see these types of cold air masses move south, especially with the NAO going almost neutral, I think that's where it's headed as we head into December. This tries to push cold into Texas, right? When that cold, dense air encounters the mountains, I just it just slides right down, and the AI is picking up on that, trying to bring temperatures more than 15 to 20 degrees below average into Texas by the time we get into December. Still, just an operational run of the artificial intelligence there from the European version of, uh, of that run. This is the long-range range weeklies. I like this more. We've been looking at this for the last couple of days. There's some new things to talk about. Here's where we are right now. We're moving through the next couple of weeks. Big ridge building still across Alaska. It is showing up, and then here comes your trough into the west. This is the cold that I think the AI and the Europeans picking up on dropping south. Now, these are seven-day averages. There is going to be a tremendous amount of spread here. It's going to be super flat looking. It's not going to look nearly as intense as the AI operational run I just showed you. I'm more interested in what all the averages are showing, and it's cold, right? And it this reflects NOAA's outlook for the next three to four weeks as we head into December, still lining up, and now you're tipping this trough a little bit into the east and into the northeast. My question is, once we get toward the 10th, 11th, and 12th, does this set us up for some kind of northeast snowstorm with some blocking going on up around Greenland? You've just absolutely, I mean, look at this ridging showing up just to the north and west of Alaska. This looks cold to me for North America heading into December, and the newest long-range weeklies try to put it cold into the east, warming up across the far west. We'll see how all this pans out. Quick look at the uh, EPO. It's going positive here sometime around the 6th and the 7th, and that gives me an idea that we probably would push things a little bit further to the east. And then it tanks, which, you know, it kind of goes against what I, I think we're looking at with the weeklies here, which is still showing the cold in the east. More to come on that. 
Here's a look at your snow totals for the seven days uh, prior to the 23rd. Okay, we're just, these are just averages out through the seven days. It takes the different uh, ensemble models and it puts out more of a flat look. So you're not going to see the individual intense snow. But what I want you to notice is how it starts to focus to the east. I'm going to back it up, right? So it starts in the west, starts across the central U.S. by the time we get into December, and then it shifts east, lining up almost with our temperatures exactly. Cold in Europe. I've been talking about this for the last couple of days. Look at this flow here. This is chilly, and bang, look at that, pushing further to the east. When you get cold in Europe, you typically, I would say almost like clockwork, are going to get cold in the lower 48 and into Canada. And it looks like it's on to me with this setup that really starts to get disrupted. Here's a quick look at where the cold is. It's actually retreating. You can see it moving north uh, into eastern Canada. Another quick shot of some cold air down into the northeast as we head into the weekend, but it's not going to get cold across the south. The real chilly air is up into this region, but we do start to see that pattern shift up. And now we're starting to pull it down into the west as we head toward the 27th, 28th, and 29th. Right here, guys, this is the real cold air. This is the chunk that I think we have to watch that will break off as we head toward the end of the month, likely impacting the Great Lakes and the Northern Plains at first with wave one. And now the true polar Arctic air starts to set up. This is the operational European, or though this is the GFS rather, not the European, but it's also got the, that idea of that cold reloading. So the two big global models, they're showing it. And uh, when you go back to the beginning of the video, if you've missed that, you're just joining us. I mean, with this stratospheric warming, this is, uh, yeah, I, I would argue that it, it, it's very reminiscent of, uh, of the 80s for these types of setups. However, we'll say 1983 it was an El Nino year, I do believe. I went dug into that just a little bit. But at this point, I'm sorry, I don't care what year it is. It's hard to argue with that in late November and December. Here's where the snow is going to be in the rain over the coming days. We'll take you through the next couple of days. And by the way, if you're new, I'm Travis. Welcome to the channel. I worked in TV many, many years ago. I was a chief meteorologist. I've been out of that business for a while, but I tell folks on the channel, I see the OGs in the chat. Once you're a weather geek, you're always a weather geek. So if you want to track winter storms with me this winter and the patterns as they change and evolve, subscribe. It's free 99. Cold pocket of air spinning right towards Los Angeles. More rain, more snow in this region. Snow levels dropping here in Southern California. We may actually get some snow into Colorado where it's been super dry. I saw a, uh, a picture from somewhere in Colorado. I don't remember what ski resort it was. Barren. Got the white ribbon of death, if you will, with that stripe of snow uh, down the ski resort on the slopes. We may actually get some natural snow here into the Four Corner States as we head toward Thursday and Friday. If you don't get it out of this one, if you don't get much, at least I think there's another chance if this upper low will swing in. Could bring some more moisture here into the Four Corner States, and it just it stays active across the Pacific Northwest heading into next week. Some chilly air here into the northern Rockies, too, as the snow chances go up here. Here's where the snow is going to fall over the coming days. This takes you through Wednesday. There's that snow into parts of northern Arizona, into New Mexico, maybe into Colorado. Highest elevations could see a foot or more, with that snow also heavy into the Sierra. Here's a look at your temperatures across the west. Take this out through a couple of days, and then we're going to head east because we've got some severe weather on the table as we head into Tuesday, even into Wednesday. Weak system sliding east along our boundary between some cold polar air to the north and some warmer tropical air to the south. Along that, some severe weather possible heading into tomorrow. Also, some snow on the northern side of that into parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin. Not a lot. Don't get too excited. Just a little bit, though. That moves east pretty quickly. And then we see return flow starting in Texas with showers and thunderstorms breaking out here ahead of our next system. Storm Prediction Center watching this region heading into tomorrow, Tuesday, and then as we head into Wednesday, we're looking from parts of Oklahoma down into Texas. Some damaging winds and some hail possible with these storms with temperatures pretty warm. Look at this on Tuesday. You talk about a dividing line, two seasons here, 30s to the north, even 20s. And then you go to the south and you're in the 70s and 80s. Dallas may get into the mid 80s on Tuesday. As we head into Wednesday, not much change is really happening across this part of the country. A little bit warmer the further north you go. And then heading into Thursday, look at all of this warm air across the deep south. High temperatures, uh, not summer-like. I mean, summer's in the 90s across the south, but it's still pretty warm. Further to the east, and then we're going to take things out on the, on the GFS operationally. I want to show you what it's picking up on. Uh, here comes that rain and snow, a little bit possible here across western PA. I don't know if it's going to be cold enough to get up towards Bradford, maybe some snow. 
I don't know if we get the snow into New Jersey. It's going to be so close. The GFS is always a little bit colder, but it tries to show that hint late Tuesday night into Wednesday morning here, and that moves away pretty quickly. High pressure moving straight toward Maine, and then showers increasing from Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, back to the west as this moisture increases. Also pretty doggone warm here, too, with temperatures above average. You saw, saw those departures. More cold air, though, heading toward the northeast. A quick look at your snow potential. This is the odds of seeing more than one inch of snow. I told you, it's pretty low here. We're talking about maybe in some of these spots a 20 to a 30% chance on the latest European ensemble guidance. If you went back earlier today, uh, it was actually less than that. So maybe you could argue the models are trending colder, but I don't know that I would go that far. Here's a look at your temperatures heading into Tuesday. Look at the difference. My gracious, you're in the mid-30s here across central PA, northern West Virginia, pop just to the south, also into Ohio. Now you're into the 70s back here, almost 70 anyway. Uh, back here towards Evansville, I don't know if it's going to get quite that warm, but Memphis, da uh, Nashville should be well into the 70s and even 80s. Very close, flirting with 80 anyway, in Starkville, Mississippi. All right, let's take the GFS out even further because I think it's, it's pretty wild to see how all of this plays out as we head into the coming weeks. I'm going to really widen this out. We'll take a look at continental North America because here we are right now. There comes the rain as we head into the weekend. This is sort of where we stopped across the country. And again, this is one operational run, so don't get too excited or too hung up on anything past this point. But I want to watch these patterns and how it's going to really impact and interact with the cold. And you're starting to see hints of that as we head toward the 24th, I think, with some heavy snow across the northern Rockies. And look what happens by next Tuesday. The GFS is trying to put a big storm here somewhere. And this makes sense, right? The cold air digging in. You're going to get something forming along your boundaries. Your Arctic air starts to move south, and then that tries to lift to the north. And I said this last night. I think just this area right in here, as we move over the next couple of weeks, this will progressively move to the east with, with these storm tracks as the cold starts to push to the south. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're joining the live stream. You can take it back from the beginning. We explain all that at the beginning. And now we're in fantasy land. I've been in weather long enough, I know. You can't believe anything really past a couple of days, and you get past seven, and you're just like, whoa. But this could potentially be what it looks like, that cold, dense air driving south. All right, so now it's when the fantasy storms start blowing up. This is when people grab a screenshot, and they share that across social media, and what they don't do is take you back 12 hours and show you well, this is what it looked like on the last run. Okay, a lot of variability still once we get way out in time, but the cold is showing up. And in my mind, it's stronger than ever. At least the signals are. More to come. Make sure you subscribe. If you like this content, m several of you are, have watched the video this far. If you made it this far, hit subscribe. Come back. I do these almost every day. As we head into winter, we'll be doing it a lot more. All right. See you next time.